What if you could build a simple timber frame that completely transformed a section of your garden? Well, it's easy to do, and it's going to cost you a lot less than you think. And I'm doing it with the most humble of garden materials, the tomato steak and the tree steak. But the first step is to make a frame for our frame. Here's some of our smaller tomato steaks, and I've cut them at about 600 mil long. I'm going to create a frame like this, and that's going to give us support for our verticals to go into. I'm just going to pre-drill them and screw them together. I'm all right. I'm already frame done, you need to put it on something nice and flat. A path will do, because I'm doing mine on lawn, I'm using a piece of ply. And then you take your stakes and place them in each corner. Now, these come in packs of three, so you could do a pyramid, but I've got one extra to make it nice and sturdy. Then hold it at the top, level around that you can cut to, and then we'll start putting it together. Stakes cut, you want to put them back in your nice level frame. And you want to check that you're pretty close to the level on top. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is a really rustic material with bows in it, so it's difficult to do. But then I'll be putting a plate on top, which I'll screw down, and that'll hold it all together. Starting to take shape, but no, it's never really going to look like that. It does need a bit more support, though, around the sides to stop it from twisting. So. I've cut some of the smaller tomato steaks, and we'll just screw them onto the sides. What you don't want to do with your side supports is pre-cut them all, because, like I mentioned, we're working with a pretty rustic timber here, and the measurements be all over the place. So just put two on opposing sides, and then take some off-cuts, line them up, and that'll be your cut. I'm giving our frame just a light sand to get rid of the burrs. Then I can apply some paint. Now, you could leave this to go nice and grey as it weathered, or you could be a bit more traditional and paint it white. I'm actually going to go contemporary and paint it black. You could use a roller as well, but because we've got so many intricate joints, I'm just going to use a spray can because it's much easier. And this is exactly where it's going. This is an old veggie patch, which we're turning into a flower garden. It's going to look really nice out the windows of the house. But to finish it off and to formalize it, I'm just putting a bit of a finial on it. It gives it a bit more of a traditional look. This is actually a furniture leg turned upside down. It's indoor timber, but we've painted it, so it should be fine. I'm going to level this up, and then I can get some plants in. Now, because you've got a frame, it's perfect for climbing plants. You can plant sweet peas in there. You could plant a small passion fruit. Something like that would be perfect. But I walked past this at the nursery, this buddleia, and I couldn't say no to it. I'm going to pop that in the middle, and it's going to grow up and out, but I'll keep it quite trimmed to the shape. It'll be really nice. Then in each corner, I'm going to have a rounded buxus ball and then lots of flowering perennials throughout the rest. With the buddleia as our centerpiece, I've got a bit of a backdrop to our planting here. We've got some salvias, which are going to get higher, some penstemon, and some miscanthus. The rest of the stuff is really colorful dahlias, for lotus, there's veronica, there's all sorts, and it's all grades down to the front. So when I come around the corner and look at this garden bed, we've got this huge ramp of color and flowers. So 
So there you have it. You can see our obelisk adds some fantastic vertical accent to the garden. And it gives this section almost a French country cottage feel. They're really simple to make. You can make as many as you want. Give it a go, and you'll see how quick and easy it really is. I feel the sunlight on my eyes.